Now from Wavy News 10, this is a breaking news alert. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Kayla Gaskins. We have breaking news in Richmond. That's where Governor Ralph Northam is speaking after a racist photo surfaced in Eastern Virginia Medical School's yearbook from 1984. The picture shows one person in blackface and another in KKK clothing. Last night, the governor apologized, saying he would regain the people's trust and finish his term. But now he's saying he doesn't believe he was in the picture. Governor Northam is about to address the issue of the photo in Richmond. We will have that live for you in a few moments. Reversal as to what, what he said yesterday. We have it live for you now, and we're waiting for the governor to stand up there and speak and see what he has to say today in regards to this photo. Here's the governor now. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. I'm pleased to be joined by my wife, Pam, and thank you for being here as well. There has been much public discussion about racist and offensive material that appear on my page of the 1984 Eastern Virginia Medical School yearbook. And I believe it is important for Virginians to hear directly from me and to and for me to answer as many questions as are necessary about these circumstances. With that in mind, I would like to read a statement about these events and then I will be glad to take your questions. Yesterday, I took responsibility for content that appeared on my page in the Eastern Virginia Medical School yearbook that was clearly racist and offensive. I am not and will not excuse the content of the photo. It was offensive, racist, and despicable. When my staff showed me the photo in question yesterday, I was seeing it for the first time. I did not purchase the EVMS yearbook, and I was unaware of what was on my page. When I was confronted with the images yesterday, I was appalled that they appeared on my page, but I believe then and now that I am not either of the people in that photo. I stand by my statement of apology to the many Virginians who were hurt by seeing this content on a yearbook page that belongs to me. It is disgusting, it is offensive, it is racist, and it was my responsibility to recognize and prevent it from being published in the first place. I recognize that many people will find this difficult to believe. The photo appears with others I submitted on a page with my name on it. Even in my own statement yesterday, I conceded that based on the evidence presented to me at the time. The most likely explanation that it was indeed me in the photo. In the hours since I made my statement yesterday, I reflected with my family and classmates from the time and affirmed my conclusion that I am not the person in that photo. While I did not appear in this photo, I am not surprised by its appearance in the EVMS yearbook. In the place and time where I grew up, many actions that we rightfully recognize as abhorrent today were commonplace. My belief that I did not wear that costume or attend that party stems in part from my clear memory of other mistakes I made in this same period of my life. That same year, I did participate in a dance contest in San Antonio in which I darkened my face as part of a Michael Jackson costume. I look back now and regret that I did not understand the harmful legacy of an action like that. It is because my memory of that episode is so vivid that I truly do not believe I am in the picture in my yearbook. You remember these things. As I began my career and met my wife, Pam, I also began to develop a stronger understanding of this country's history and the harm that certain actions and attitudes cause. That does not excuse my behaviors up to that point, 
but it did offer me an opportunity to change and to grow, and I took it. I pursued my career as a soldier, a physician, and as a public servant because I wanted to help people. The experiences I had in each of those chapters and the people I met along the way helped me form a set of values that define the person I am now and the way I aspire to lead this commonwealth as your governor. In some ways, my personal history mirrors that of this commonwealth. There are actions and behaviors in my past that were hurtful, but like Virginia, I have also made significant progress in how I approach these issues. I am far from perfect, and I can always strive to do more. But I have devoted my entire life, my career in the Army, as a pediatrician, and in public service, to making life better for all people, no matter who they are. Today, I am not ready to ask Virginians to grant me their forgiveness for my past actions. I also do not fully expect that they will immediately believe my account of these events. Right now, I am simply asking for the opportunity to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that the person I was is not the man I am today. I am asking for the opportunity to earn your forgiveness. If I were to listen to the voices calling on me to resign my office today, I could spare myself from the difficult path that lies ahead. I could avoid an honest conversation about harmful actions from my past. I cannot in good conscience choose the path that would be easier for me in an effort to duck my responsibility to reconcile. I took an oath to uphold this office and serve the people of this commonwealth to the best of my ability as long as I believe I can effectively fulfill that task, I intend to continue doing the business of Virginia. I believe this moment can be the first small step to open a discussion about these difficult issues and how they contribute to the greater racism and discrimination that defines so much of our history. This very house stands as a monument to the dark and complicated history of this commonwealth. These walls are adorned with portraits of men and women who owned slaves, actively oppressed people of color, as well as men and women who stood tall and advanced the causes of equality and racial justice in the commonwealth and this country. In that discussion, it will not be my role to speak to Virginians about these issues. My responsibility is to listen, to learn, and to continue to grow as a man and as a leader. I am ready for an honest conversation about racial injustice and the need for real reconciliation, real justice, and real equality. I believe the agenda this administration is pursuing clearly demonstrates the progress both I and our Commonwealth have made since the darkest chapters of our history. I promise to fight for Virginia that works better for all people and our commitment to economic justice, access to health care, criminal justice reform, educational equity, and a clean environment reflect those priorities. As this conversation moves forward, I want to hear from Virginians from every walk of life about how we can fight even harder to build the Virginia that they deserve. Before I take questions, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to the many people who have been hurt by this episode and mistakes that I have made in the past. I am ready to earn your forgiveness, and I am ready to begin today. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. Yes, sir. Be crystal clear, you're saying that you had no idea this racist photo existed before it surfaced less than 24 hours ago. The, the photo in the EVMS yearbook? Yes. That's correct. I was uh, in the United States Army. Uh, while I was in medical school, uh, I uh, knew where I was going upon uh, graduation from medical school. Uh, I was doing rotations uh, out of the state. Uh, I had nothing to do with the preparation of the uh, yearbook, nor did I buy one. And so this was the first time, yesterday evening was the first time I saw this photo. It was shocking and it was horrific. 
How do you account for one of your nicknames that's listed in the VMI in your book in 1981, Coon Tank? What's your explanation for that? My, my main nickname uh, in high school uh, and in college was Goose. Uh, because when my voice was changing, I would change an octave. Uh, there were two individuals, as best I can relate, at VMI. They were a year ahead of me. They called me Coon Man. I don't know their motives or intent. Uh, I know who they are. Um, but uh, that was the extent of that, and it ended up in the yearbook, and I, I regret that. Before you spoke, you had almost the entire Democratic establishment calling for your resignation, saying that it's Justin Fairfax who deserves to sustain where you're standing right now. What's your response to that? You know, um, I think we have, have done a great job over the last year. We've worked on a lot of the, the, the challenges that I uh, just outlined. Um, this has hurt a lot of people. Uh, it's hurt a lot of people in our party. I suspect it's hurt people in the opposing party. And it's hurt Virginians. And I want to assure everybody, number one, that that is not my picture. Uh, that is not my person. Uh, on that picture in the yearbook. Um, we will continue uh, to lead. We will continue to talk about the issues that are important. But we also will have a conversation as we move forward about trust. Uh, and I have uh, been a man of honor. Uh, as you know, I was the president of the Honor Court at BMI. Uh, I asked my colleagues, I asked Virginians uh, to accept my word, uh, to realize that I have made mistakes in my past, to offer forgiveness. Uh, and then let's all as a commonwealth move forward. Right but last question, last question, question sir. You, you, you talked there about some incident in San Antonio yeah. that made you realize that you may have actually been in blackface for some time. Yeah. Remember what year that was and what context around that event? I remember exactly. Uh, it was in 1984, uh, which was my first year in, in San Antonio upon graduation from uh, medical school. You were in the military, yeah. I was. Had you ever posed in a KKK? Absolutely well, not. Two people in that and Absolutely not. There is no way that I have ever been in a KKK uniform. I am not the person in that uniform, and I am not the, the person to the right. And you talk about believing that you were getting an opportunity to be an effective leader of yes. the Commonwealth. How much time do you think you have to prove that, or when will you know that you're not being effective? It's a great question. And, you know, we're going to move forward from today. We'll take one day at a time. Uh, I obviously will have discussions uh, with our caucuses, uh, with the Republican caucuses, with the people of Virginia. Uh, and as long as I feel that I can lead, I will continue to do that. If I reach a point where I am not comfortable with that, then obviously we will sit down and have that discussion. Thank you. Governor, how yes. is it that you can win over the support of you know, your own party at this point? I mean, I've been speaking to Democrats who say they don't want to go forward with you. How do you bring them back in? Yes, that, well, a lot of it is communication. And it starts today. I, I've obviously uh, been talking to a lot of my colleagues. But it really starts today, to, I, I think, to correct the record and to let them know that I am not the person in that photo that, that caused this uh, stir yesterday. Uh, I have made mistakes in my past, as I admit it. Uh, but I am a person of my word. I will continue to, to work closely. I have great friends on both sides of the aisle. And as I said earlier, this has been hurtful. Uh, and that's why I reached out last night and, and called people and apologized. But I will continue to work as hard as I can to, uh, to maintain their faith in me, to maintain uh, my ability to lead, uh, and we'll all hopefully work together and move forward. Bonnie, we're Governor, Bonnie over here. Governor, at your inauguration, your minister, uh, Reverend Jones, prayed yes. during that time, and we have it on the record, um, that you would always seek wise counsel. That yes. was in... That was part of what he prayed, and that God would guide your thoughts and your steps. Absolutely. Can you tell us who you sought for wise counsel for this decision today? Well, and do you feel like a higher power is guiding you to this decision? There is no question, uh, and I am a, a, a strong believer in, in God. I, I'm a member of. Uh, First Baptist Church uh, in Cateville, Virginia. My, my pastor, Reverend Jones, is actually here with us today. Uh, but obviously, one of the ways that I have been able to, I believe, govern successfully uh, is to listen. Uh, I have a great cabinet. I have great relationships with people on both sides of the aisle. I am very secure in where I believe we need to take Virginia. Uh, and so as we have moved through this last 24 hours, uh, I have spoken uh, and, and consulted a lot of people. Um, 
I have prayed about this, and I will continue to pray. Uh, and obviously, uh, I couldn't stand here without the support of my wife, Sam. Director Snyder. Uh, Governor, some Democrats have said that it's selfish of you to continue in office, to work out your own situation here at their expense during an election year when they have hopes of making gains in the legislature. Yeah. Can you talk about that and what you would say to them about that? Yeah, Greg, I think the first thing and why I felt so strongly about this statement and being here today is to set the record straight. And, you know, this started last night. Uh, we're, we're now about 24 hours uh, into this. Uh, it started with me pres being presented uh, a picture uh, from a yearbook that I had never seen before that was horrific. Uh, and I reached out and apologized to my colleagues. I uh, released two statements, uh, as you know. Um, and, you know, all I can do is what I've always done, and that's to be honest, uh, to to really to be able to listen, to be open with people, and and as, as I think to the previous question, Greg, um, I plan to continue to lead. Uh, if we get to the point where we feel that we're not effective, that we're not efficient, uh, not only for our caucuses but the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, then we will uh, revisit this and, and uh, make decisions. Amy Freeman, yes. Um, the answer to your last question is no, he hasn't. Uh, Justin and I have a very, very close relationship. He is a wonderful person. He is doing a great job as Lieutenant Governor. Uh, I have spoken to him in person uh, for a good period of time yesterday afternoon after this story broke, and, and I believe at least three times uh, by phone I have kept him apprised of, of what is going on. Uh, he has been very supportive. Um, and he will continue to be supportive. Uh, he is a, a wonderful person, and, and you know, the people of Virginia elected the lieutenant governor, uh, put faith in the lieutenant governor in the event they, that they need to take over as governor. Uh, he, he'll be ready to do that. Okay. Governor, um, you said that you were recalling the black um, Why do you remember that incident so vividly and not this one? And what have your conversations been with your class? Well, the, the reason that I so vividly don't remember this one because it didn't happen. So why would you take credit or apologize for hearing it? Well, and that's where I think we need clarification. I take credit for recognizing that this was a horrific photo that was on my page with my name, Ralph Northam above. Uh, I looked at it. My first impression actually that this couldn't be me, uh, but there was so much hurt that I was feeling people were calling. So I, I reached out and and apologize to people for this uh, very picture being on my, my page. Um, and I have continued to, to discuss that as we have gone forward. And, and what has happened is that last night, I finally had a chance to sit down and look at the photograph in detail. Um, it is definitely not me. Uh, I can tell by looking at it. I have had friends also look at it and tell me it's not me. Um, I have also uh, had a classmate who I discussed this mo with this morning. Uh, we talked about this situation, and I said, you know, is there a possibility, you think, that someone could have put a photo on the wrong page? She said it happened on numerous pages in this very yearbook. So I don't, I still don't have a copy of the yearbook. We are in the process of obtaining that. We're going to look through. We're going to continue to, to gather evidence uh, in the coming days, and I think all of you will be reassured uh, to see that I am not in that photograph. Alan. Governor, you said um, at the, the San, San Antonio party you darkened your face. I just want to be perfectly yeah. clear. Were, were you in blackface? At that I point? wasn't. I, I mean, I, I'll tell you exactly what I did, uh, Alan. Uh, I uh, dressed up uh, in a, uh, um, what's his name? Michael Jackson, excuse me. That's why I had Pam with me. Um, I had uh, the shoes, I had a, a glove, uh, and I used just a little bit of shoe polish to put under my, or on my cheeks. And the reason I used a very little bit is because I don't know if anybody's ever tried that, but you cannot get shoe polish off. But, but it was, a, it was a, a dance contest. I had always liked Michael Jackson. Uh, I actually won the contest because I had learned how to do the moonwalk. But then let me tell you what happened, uh, Alan. Uh, I have a very close friend who was uh, my assistant during the campaign. Uh, I don't think he would mind me telling you his name. His name is Seth Apoka Yeboah. 
Um, and during some of our long rides around the Commonwealth, the very issue of black facing came up. And he really did a good job communi communicating to me why that's so offensive. And, and it was actually during that conversation, I said, you know, Seth, uh, I put some polish on my face. I competed in a dance contest dressed up as Michael Jackson. And I said, I assume you probably would, would think that's offensive. He said, I would. And I said, you know what, Seth? I appreciate you being open with me. I apologize for what I've done in the past. And I can promise you I'll never do that again in the future. Yeah, I've got to in with the pilot. Um, we were we talked to some other students at GDMS who said that you know they always submitted their photos for the year. Um, there are four pictures on on your page. Yes. Did you choose all four of them? Did you choose three of them? And then if you're saying the last one is not you, are you saying that it's placed there without your consent? It's. Are you saying the last photo is placed there without your consent? Yes, uh, there are three photos to, I think if I could look at the picture, but I think there are three photos. One, me standing in front of a car that I restored. One, kneeling, uh, like on a farm setting. And then one, just a more formal picture. Uh, I did submit those. Um, where this other picture came from, I don't know. Uh, and I'm not going to sit here and, and hypothesize or speculate how it happened, but I can only imagine that if there are a number of photos laid out on the table and someone is pasting those on page after page, that one could get mistakenly put on the wrong page. And, and as I said earlier, uh, this has happened numerous times in this particular yearbook, and I suspect that's what happened in this case. Right Governor, how do you expect people to believe you? Because yesterday you were accepting responsibility for this, and then within less than 24 hours you're saying, no, it wasn't me. You can find it hard to believe how, that people are having a hard time, that people are having a hard time with this. Why should they believe you? I'm accepting, excuse me, accepting responsibility that this photograph was on my page in the yearbook. Uh, I regret that. It is horrific. Uh, it made me sick uh, when I saw it. Um, but I will tell you uh, that my word, uh, I will stand and live by my word. I was the president of the VMI Honor Court. Our code there is a cadet shall not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those do. Uh, that's the most meaningful thing to me in my life. Uh, I tell the truth. I'm telling the truth today. That was not my picture. Right in, right here, right Governor, uh, the, there's a quote on the yearbook that talks about drinking. Is it possible, were you a big drinker at the time, and is it possible that you were drinking when you took a photo and just don't remember? You know, I have uh, had a, a drink over the years, several drinks over the years, but I have never uh, been to the point where I'm not in touch uh, with my surroundings. Um, and the, the whole point, and this is what really baffled me of, of this situation, uh, I looked at that photograph, once I started thinking, I said, if I had have dressed up like that, had put whatever was on that person's face, and stood beside a costume of the KKK, I would remember that. And I have no recollection at all. And there are some other things, as I said, if, if you look at, if one looks at the picture, uh, it's not my picture. Um, I remember the dance contest in San Antonio just like it was yesterday. And so my conclusion from that is I certainly take responsibility for what happened in San Antonio. I have learned from that. But this was not my picture. I was not in that costume, either uh, as blackface or as KKK. Uh, and it's, it's not me. Time for a couple more. One year. If that, that would have been you in that picture, would you have resigned? And why do you think that that picture is any more offensive than it's a great point, and you know, I, I uh, at the time uh, when I dressed up as Michael Jackson, it was a talent show. Um, I didn't personally find it as as unacceptable at that, that, that time. I had learned since again uh, in talking to my uh, uh, to my friend Seth. The the picture though that is in the EBMS yearbook with the the black facing. Uh, and the member of the KKK uh, is just horrific. It's totally offensive. And so uh, I find both of them uh, to be wrong. Um, I wasn't responsible for the first one. I can tell you that. Uh, I take responsibility for the uh, issue in, in San Antonio. Oh, Marie. Governor, sorry. Marie, Benny. So, Governor, you've had um, a little bit of a rough week. Um, you know, earlier in the week with the comments on abortion and the loosening restrictions. Um, why do you think this? 
now. You know, I I don't want to ever, you know, try to judge uh, someone's intent, but uh, it is perhaps coincidental. Um, and you know, I I guess most accurately is to to probably ask the person. Um, I've heard kind of secondhand uh, from that person uh, why he did this, uh, but I would rather it come from you. Uh, but it was, there was an agenda involved. Governor, kind of to that point, um, you've run two pretty rough and tumble statewide races in recent years. Uh, anyone would think that goes to this kind of a race does a stealth search of this kind of material. Well, inevitably, your opponents are probably doing it as well. Did yes. it ever dawn on you to go back and look for your books from everyone from kindergarten all the way through, just in case there was something? You know, we always are asked when we're running, you know, what kind of things should, should our people look into. Uh, obviously, there's opposition to research uh, on the other side. But uh, I would tell you, um, no, I didn't. I didn't ever really think about that there would be anything offensive in my EBMS yearbook. Uh, but this, this, this literally hit me like a ton of bricks last night. It, it totally caught me off guard. So uh, it was something that I wasn't expecting. And, and to your point, um, the people that do that kind of research, um, Perhaps they should have looked at that. And you, you said that the competition in San Antonio was the dance competition? Yes. And it was that you danced the moonwalk? That's right. Are you still able to moonwalk? No. Uh, <coughs> my wife says inappropriate circumstances. <laughs> Why do you feel like this is the best way forward for Virginia for you to stay in office? And you have constituents, you have top leaders saying they've lost trust in you. Sure. So reopened. What I really want to do is, is talk about the, the racism and the hatred and the bigotry that, that I have fought so long and hard for. I mean, I, I'll give you just a quick example. You know, when, when the white supremacists marched into Charlottesville, uh, I was there with uh, then Governor McCulloch uh, and our uh, Attorney General just denouncing that. Um, and so that's I have felt very strongly about that. Um, we still have a lot of issues to work on as we move forward, as I, as I talk about inequities in access to voting, access to education, health care, uh, the justice system. So we still have a lot of work to do. And I, I really think this is probably a good opportunity to, you know, to, to talk about that issue with, with what has happened this week. Hey, Governor? Governor, yes. the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus has um, been viewing your remarks and has already responded amplifying their calls for you to resign. How do you respond to that? Well, I will continue to reach out and talk to them uh, about this issue. Uh, again, I want to reinforce, um, as I was saying earlier in the question, I have made mistakes in my life, but what caused this stir up yesterday, I'm not responsible for. That, that is not me in that photo. And I, I would hope that the, uh, all the caucuses and the people of Virginia will realize that. That's not me. That's not who I am. Um, and while I had made mistakes in my past, uh, what started this yesterday uh, is, is, is something that is not realistic, and I just hope people will realize that. Hey, Governor, Governor. Hey, John. Hey, John. Your remarks, hey, John. to move for racial reconciliation yes. in this state, kind of use what happened as an opportunity to move forward. In that spirit, there's lots of people who are saying that they believe that uh, this moment should prompt people on this day to take down the monuments to Confederate soldiers. Where would you come down at this point? And if you do stay in office, would you push to take down the statue? As you, you know, Jonathan, we've had that discussion. Um, that, that discussion really was highlighted after the Charlottesville episode. And, and I really think what Virginia has, has looked at uh, is, is doing this on a regional basis to let the localities assess the uh, statues that they have and if they find them uh, unacceptable uh, to remove them. I think the other thing that we can do uh, as we move forward. Avenue, where, where Lee Pardon me? Well, that's that's going to be a discussion for the city of Richmond. Um, Sarah, Governor, Governor I, it's, yeah. it's hard to still understand uh, how this all came to be. So you're saying that you were able to get together uh, with a group of your friends and family and closely look at this photo uh, to come to the determination that it wasn't you. And uh, I think that's deeply troubling for a lot of people. How is this something uh, that you could be confused about? Is this was this part of a, a lifestyle 
or was this a one particular incident as you described related to Michael Jackson? Well, not to repeat what we have already said, but this was when I was shown this last night. Uh, it was horrific, uh, and uh, it really horrified me. Um, and so we did what we needed to do uh, last night, I think, and that it was to reach out and, and make sure to apologize for, for those that may be hurt. But I will tell you that the more time I've had to, to think about this, to, to realize that I had no recollection at all of ever dressing up like that, to be able to talk to some of my classmates uh, who said that uh, they have never seen me in any outfit like that. And just, and just finally, um, to be able to talk to my roommate. Uh, we're very close. Uh, I think some of you have already reached out to him. Uh, Rob Marsh, who was the medic in Black Hawk Down. You understand and the it, correlation between the photo and your nickname, right? And you're saying that your nickname was rooted in the fact that your, your voice changed octaves? There, there's a correlation there, right? Well, two nicknames. The, the nickname Goose. That nickname was not in the book. I, it was. It was. Okay, yeah, it so, was. so that nickname was there. What, what, what about the other nickname? How do you describe that? Well, as, as I said, you would need to probably go talk to the folks that put that into your book and also the folks that used to refer to me. I don't know what their intent Last was. Last year, that. Sarah, and then here. Governor, I wanted to ask you, you said that you think not resign, you think resigning would be the easier path in this case. As you've noted, multiple leaders, including a lot of black leaders, NAACP, the Black Caucus here in Virginia, that's the path they've asked you to take. Yes. Why not, out of respect for their wishes, shouldn't you just resign? You know, I will continue to have discussion with them. Again, I, I really think if they will listen to me, uh, again, I, I'd hate to uh, be so redundant, but for them to know that this was not me in that picture, that was not Ralph Norville. And I hope that they will accept that. I hope that they will take my word. And then we need to continue to have discussions. As I said earlier, I have talked to these individuals uh, in the last 24 hours on numerous occasions, and I will continue to do that to, to hopefully build their trust in, and let them know that you know we've done a good job in the first year. We've, we've made some great accomplishments. But if they continue Virginia. to press for your resignation after these conversations continue, will you heed that call? I'm sorry, what was If they can, these groups continue to press for your resignation after these discussions continue, will you heed their call? I will certainly be open to their desires and concerns, but you know one of the, one of the things I, I think we'll be able to do, we're collecting uh, information on this particular photo, uh, and I, I hope to have some more information in the next couple of days. And I, I will continue to present that to them and just let them know that that was not me. On, on that point, Governor, for clarity, you seem to suggest in the course of your comments that there were other mistakes in this medical school with your book, that your page wasn't the only page. What informs that? Is that entirely anecdotal, or do you have something else to pass? No, and I, I would welcome you to, uh, to look at uh, that particular yearbook. Uh, there are numerous pictures in there of, of face painting. Uh, none of whom are me. Uh, black face. Black face. Yes, I'm sorry. Blackface uh, that are in there. And I believe, I, I don't know if they've released it yet, but I think Eastern Virginia Medical School uh, is in the process of reviewing each of their yearbooks and will put a statement out that, that it is unacceptable uh, and that we need to make a change as we move forward. Thank you. Governor, you said in the last 24 hours that you had some time to recollect and think back on your experience, discuss it with your family and former roommates. Shouldn't those discussions have taken place before you came out and you released a written statement and then a video statement? And if that was a mistake, maybe this judgment, why should the people of Virginia trust your judgment going forward on other issues? Well, I've, I've always been straightforward with folks and, and honest, and, I, and that's what I'm doing now. And, and again, just to see this horrific picture, yesterday evening that was on my page with my name <coughs> over top of it. Uh, that was horrifying to me. And so I did feel it was necessary to reach out and discuss that. Uh, as I said, and I'm not going to be redundant, but uh, in the last 24 hours, I have been able to review the picture, talk to people, and, and the picture is not me. Why did that happen before, though? Well, I just thought it was very yeah, important. That's quite the thing to admit. As you may imagine, uh, there were a lot of people calling. Uh, you all do a good job of uh, releasing information, and, and I was doing everything that I could to, to really communicate uh, with the people that I felt needed to be communicated with that, that were hurt by this. So initially, you initially think that it was you? Pardon me? Did you initially think that it could have been you? I didn't study it as, as well as I should. I Let me just say, finish your, my question. <laughs> the first comment that I made to the individual that, that showed it to me, I said, this, this can't be me. 
Uh, it, though, was on. It sounds like a question more than a statement. Well, it's not me. Uh, and it was horrific. And the fact that it was on my page was just unacceptable. And I felt the need, as did my staff, to reach out and, and apologize how, how for these How old were you during the, the Michael Jackson incident? What, what time did you use that? During that, I was 25. What so steps are you taking to investigate the picture? Can you talk a little bit more about that? There are several different measures. Uh, to, yes, to look at things such as facial rec recognition. And, and again, I hope everybody in Virginia will be patient with me. That's going to take a little bit of the time. And that's, that's really, Greg, why I don't want to rush into any decisions. I, I want to have all the facts, and I want Virginia to have all the facts. That's important to me. Governor, what are you doing in the immediate future here? Well, I will continue to work with my staff uh, and continue to reach out. And uh, my, my phone has uh, been working very hard in the last 24 hours, and I, I'll continue to do that. It's all, you know, this process of leadership uh, is all about communication, and I've, I've done a good job in the past with that, and that's what I plan to do in the upcoming days. If you, if you knew it wasn't you, why not just say that publicly right now? Alan, I didn't know at the time. I, there was so much happening, but like I was What, what sorry, did you know? You, you just said you saw the picture and said that it can't be me. Why not just say that publicly? Well, I, because my word is, is important to me, and, and my first intention, Alan, was to, to reach out and and apologize and there as you might imagine and understand there are a lot of people that are hurt by this and I wanted to reach out to them after I did that last night I sat and looked at the picture today I've had the opportunity to talk to classmates my roommate and I am convinced that it's not my picture could there be other photos that look similar to this of you in blackface that could come out absolutely not thank you Governor you're asking folks now to take some time let this investigation unfold, avoid a rush to judgment. Isn't that the opposite of what took place yesterday with yourself when you rushed to judgment and apologizing for this rather than waiting for the full facts to come out and then sharing votes with the public? It's a fair question, but I, I just uh, really thought it was important to, uh, again, when, when this broke yesterday afternoon, uh, there were just a lot of people calling, and I, I, I just felt like I needed to to talk to them and, and to put out a statement that, uh, that this is unacceptable to have a picture such as that uh, in the yearbook on my page. And so that's why I started reaching out to people. You can do that without saying that is me in that picture, though. It, it has taken time for me to make sure that it's not me, but I am convinced. I am convinced that I am not in that picture. Some of those lawmakers who want to say the, the, the chance, the, the, the possibility that you thought it could be you is, a is enough alone. What do you say to that? You know, Alan, I, I don't know how many times I, I can say this, but um, again, it, you know, if, if you could go back sometime and, and reword things, maybe uh, that would be a good idea. Hindsight's 2020, but uh, I saw this last night. It it was horrifying to me. It it it, it literally shocked me. And I just felt it important to, to reach out and, and let people know that, uh, that I, I was sorry that this picture uh, not only was in the yearbook, but was on the page with my name on it. Do you think, do you think, do you think Virginians will see a meaningful difference between you in the Michael Jackson face paint and the black face photo? Is that, is that a meaningful distinction in terms of the paper? I, that's up to them. Um, you know, if, if everything is in sound bites these days, but I, I really do believe that both of them are wrong, uh, but there's a contrast between, between the black face and someone standing there in a Ku Klux Klan outfit and me dressed up in a Michael Jackson costume for a dance contest. And, yeah. and again, they're both wrong, uh, but I would hope people would see the contrast. If that picture had come out, would you have designed? If there was a picture that had come out with you and your face darkened at the Michael Jackson contest, would that then have been enough for you to say I can step aside? No, because I'm letting you know uh, right now, uh, without a picture, that, that this is what happened. And that's the way I operate. I want to be honest with people. And uh, again, as I said earlier, I discussed this with uh, a person of color. He let me know why this was offensive. I apologized to him. Uh, and I will never do it again. Thank you. Why don't we bring out the election? That, that Michael Jackson photo, why not bring it out during the election? There, there wasn't a photo. Uh, number one. The incident, the Michael Jackson. Yes, I mean, I, I would have been glad to talk about it, but I, I didn't see the need. Nobody asked me about it, so.
Has this experience allowed you to better understand uh, what these uh, symbols uh, potentially do to people of color and how they harm them, the, the emotional trauma associated with that? There's no question. Uh, you know, we, we live and learn. We're all human. And uh, this has been a tremendous uh, learning experience. And, you know, I will, I will tell you, I, I had the, I would say, unique opportunity growing up on the Eastern Shore. Uh, I, I was in public school uh, during desegregation. Uh, I have a, a lot of African-American friends that I went to school with, played ball with. Um, and I, I suspect I've had as much exposure to, to people of color as anybody, but uh, I have learned a lot to answer to your question. And, and I will continue. Michael Jackson, um, costume, even after all the exposure that he said he had. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Yeah, why would you uh, decide to um, uh, why why did I you were dress up at that point, right? Yes, I, I didn't realize at the time that it was as as offensive as, as I have since learned and uh, knowing that what I know now I wouldn't have done it, but at the time I, I didn't realize that. Thanks so much guys. How do you think this will affect your medical practice? Hold on, sir. Well, um, what, right now, um, I think it's important that we take one day at a time. I think that we will continue to collect information to, uh, to definitively pr pr prove, uh, in addition to my word, that, that I'm not in that picture. Governor, how do you think this will affect your medical practice, um, especially with people of color, knowing and hearing all of this now? And also, what about the Lee Jackson holiday in Virginia that you have direct um, control of? Yes, as you know, there was a piece of legislation uh, this year to make uh, to make uh, uh, election day a holiday. Um, it didn't pass, but certainly in that discussion, uh, if uh, election day were a holiday, would we need to uh, rid ourselves of a different holiday and? That was part of the discussion to eliminate Lee Jackson. It's, it's actually a four-day weekend, as you know, uh, on the Friday with Monday being uh, Martin Luther King Day. Regarding uh, taking care of sick children, you know, as I've said, I, I learn uh, every day. Um, I have taken care of literally thousands of children and their families. Um, and I can tell you I treat everyone the same way. Nobody has ever uh, thought or accused me of being racist. and. Uh, if and when I practice again, I will continue that, that same direction. Do you think as a grown adult that, that it's problematic that you need to have it explained to you that blackface is offensive? No, I, you know, I'm not a person of color. And, and people of color uh, experience different things. Uh, it affects them different ways. And for us to have a dialogue for example, me with you, to you let me know what's offensive to you and, and vice versa. But you uh, explained that you've had an extraordinary exposure uh, to, to people of color, to people who, who may not have the same life experience. And as I just said, I have made mistakes in my life and I will continue to learn. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Well, that was Governor Ralph Northam addressing the racist photo controversy. Our team coverage continues now with Town Your Side Chief Political Reporter Andy Fox. He joins us live now by phone. So, Andy, you've been covering Virginia politics for decades now. You know the governor personally. Are you surprised at all by this? Uh, I am shocked, as everyone who saw that picture is shocked. I have known Ralph Northam since 2007. That's 12 years ago. I've watched him run in six campaigns, and every campaign he gets between 54 and 57 percent. He is a very well-respected person. And so when you see a picture like this, and then you hear him say yesterday, now I'm taking a man at his words, okay? He said yesterday, I am deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in this photo and for the hurt that decision caused then and now. It is clearly obvious that, and remember today, he said, Kayla, he said, you remember these things. When he was talking about the Michael Jackson photo, you remember these things. 
you remember if you are dressed in blackface and you're standing next to someone who is wearing a Ku Klux Klan hat on him, you remember those things. So today when he comes out, it falls short on people who don't want to give him the benefit of the doubt when he says, I took responsibility for that uh, offensive, racist, and despicable um, uh, comment uh, of what he was saying, and that I was seeing it, I was unaware, he said he was unaware of what it showed in the yearbook, that he was not aware of what was on his page. I am none of those people, he said. Today, he said, what happened yesterday, I am not responsible for. That is not me in those photos. So people on all the organizations who've come out against him, asking for him to resign, I don't think, Kayla, are going to be convinced by what he said today, that if you are in a picture like that, as he said today, it is something that you remember as when he is bringing up the Michael Jackson photo, which is a different type of being in blackface than the one that we saw in his yearbook from EVMS. Yeah, Andy, are you surprised by his decision not to resign? The only way, Kayla, that he can restore his reputation is to try to do this while he is governor. Mm -hmm. If he resigns as governor, then no one cares. No one is listening. But the only chance he has to redeem himself is to remain governor and try to do that. And he kept talking during the news conference, which was, which was really extraordinary, about how he's going to reach out to people, that he talked to people. I text back and forth today with Senator Louise Lucas, and she said she doesn't buy it because she was told, called by him, and he was going to say in the news conference, that is him, not him in those photos. But we all, Kayla, go back to what he said yesterday. I am deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in this photo and for the hurt that decision caused then and now. Kayla, you're looking at that picture, and someone who it's not is going to say, what is this? This is not me, and I don't ever remember this picture ever. That's what you would expect someone to say if that was absolutely not them in the photo. Andy, what about the decision to take questions, the Q&A session, after we weren't really sure if he was going to be answering any questions? I'm sure you've seen some political fumbles over the years. Did you think that that was a tactic that helped him or hurt him? It absolutely hurt him. He had to take the stand in his own defense. He had to stand up and answer the questions because it's from a free press that he is able to get his answers out there, and that's what he tried to do today. Whether it worked or not, we'll have to go out and we'll have to talk with people and find out, but I'm not surprised that he took questions. He has to take questions, and this issue is not going away. I mean, just today, Joe Biden uh, went on record by saying it's time for him to resign and it's time for Justin Fairfax to heal Virginia's wounds and move us forward. Joe Biden is saying that. We've had tweets during the uh, and statements uh, that were coming out from the different groups have uh, disavowed him, saying they still are calling for his resignation. So I think that we are at a place where we were before, where people are not going to give him the benefit of the doubt in the numbers that he leads. I want to bring up one thing real quick. Back when Monica Lewinsky happened with uh, Bill Clinton, everyone thought that he was going to resign. But there was one group of people that kept him in his presidency, and that was the Black Caucus on Capitol Hill, because they believed in him. They trusted him, and they rallied around him. If you look at all the statements that have been made, there's not one person or group of people defending him at this time. That is the difference, and that is the reason why people like Joe Biden comes out and says we need him to step down and allow Justin Fairfax, the lieutenant governor, to heal Virginia's wounds. Well, that is a very good point there, Andy. He definitely seems to be on an island now politically, not really support from anywhere. We appreciate your years of expertise and uh, your take on all of that. Andy, thank you. And, and now to protests back. gathered outside the, go the Governor Ralph Northam's mansion in Richmond this morning. They chanted and spoke saying racism continues to be a problem in Virginia. Former supporters of Governor Northam include the Virginia's Black Caucus, Virginia House and Senate Democrats, and former Governor Terry McAuley. Virginia Senators Tim Kaine and Mark Warner have not publicly asked Northam to resign. 
Our live team coverage continues now. Ten on your side's Brett Hall is in Richmond outside of the governor's mansion. And Brett, you've covered this story since it broke. You are in Richmond now. Brett, what's the mood like there? Well, it's a flurry of activity as media outlets from all over the country are coming out of the executive mansion as uh, they were been mulling around for the last 24 hours. Would we, would we see the first resignation of a Virginia governor since the Civil War and reaction to a 40 minute long press conference, which is pretty unprecedented for an issue like this. That just wrapped up. We are already getting, I just uh, got a message from Delegate Steve Heretic, which is uh, a representative in parts of Portsmouth and Norfolk, and he says the governor's statements raise more questions than they answer. While the disgraceful photo does not reflect the Ralph Northam I've come to know in the years of public service, his admission last night and his retraction today simply continue to confuse us all and distract from his ability to effectively lead. And as we already brought up, the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus has already amplified their call for him to resign. I was very interested in hearing that he has not yet seen a copy in his own eyes of the yearbook, as I did yesterday at the EVMS library. They say they are working to get a copy to examine if a picture was mixed up of some sort. A lot to unpack here, and we'll be bringing that to you throughout the day. Live in Richmond, Brett Hall, 10 on your side.